Good evening and welcome to St. Matthew's Catholic Church as we continue our Lenten journey the first Sunday of Lent. Today's Mass intentions are for our parish, the living and deceased members of the Rosary Society, and Roger Goldberg. There will be a second collection today after communion to benefit Community of Saints Regional Catholic School. Last night was the fabulous fish fry put on by the men's club, but we do still need some additional parish volunteers to help on specific weekends. If you're interested, please contact Tim Nowak or men's club members for the details. You can find those in the bulletin with the details on our menu, our cost, our serving time. And last night they sent uh, 432 meals out the door. And so a thank you again to the men's club, the Rosary Society, to the students and faculty at Community of Saints, and to the rest of our faith formation students and their families. If you forgot your Catholic Services Appeal envelope last week, you may drop it in the collection today, or if you still need an envelope, it's at the back of the church. Also available in the back of the church are the Catholic Relief Services sponsored rice bowls. These bowls include a box for donations. Some of you remember maybe doing that when you were a child, even going to school here, we had a rice bowl and we made donations and we're soliciting that again this year to help your Lenten experience and also perhaps help donate and show our love and care for our sisters and brothers around the world. Tomorrow, we're happy to welcome members of the Greater Twin Cities Youth Symphony and their director, Mary Sorley. She will be here at the 1015 Mass, and we appreciate their willingness to share their time and their talents with us. And check the bulletin again, because there are other opportunities for wonderful and beautiful music experiences here at St. Matthew's. And one other thing that the parish is doing is providing a gift for your family. The little black book, if you didn't pick yours up last week, it's at the back of the church. It has a wonderful collection of reflections and prayers for every day of Lent. Please take, your home, take yours home and enjoy it. And again, they're at the back of the church. So now, please join me and take a few moments in quiet to prepare ourselves for Mass. Thank you and welcome.
Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. We begin our prayer this evening by calling to mind our sins and the gracious mercy of God. Lord Jesus, you are the living word of God, calling us to repentance. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the Lord of life, calling us from death to life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the savior of the world, calling us to life with you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, grant through the yearly observance of Lent, we may grow in an understanding of the riches hidden in Christ Jesus, and become worthy to and by worthy conduct pursue those riches. We pray this in the name of Jesus. He lives with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people saying, the priest shall receive the basket from you and shall set it in front of the altar of the Lord your God. Then you shall declare before the Lord your God, my father was a wandering Aramean who went down to Egypt with a small household and lived there as an alien. But there he became a nation, great, strong, and numerous. When the Egyptians maltreated and oppressed us, imposing hard labor upon us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and he heard our cry and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. He brought us out of Egypt with his strong hand and outstretched arm, with terrifying power, with signs and wonders, and bringing us into this country, he gave us this land flowing with milk and honey. Therefore, I have now brought you the first fruits of the produce of the soil, which you, O Lord, have given me, and having set them before the Lord your God, you shall bow down in his presence. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what does scripture say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. For if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. For the scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, enriching all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. from the mouth of God. Praise and honor to you, Lord, oh Lord. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. With, with your, your spirit. spirit. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert for 40 days. And there he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when they were over, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, if you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. Jesus said to him, It is written, One does not live on bread alone. Then he took him up and showed him the kingdoms of the world in a single instant. The devil said to him, I will give you all this power and glory. It has been handed over to me and I may give it to whomever I wish. All this will be yours if you worship me. Jesus said to him in reply, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. Then he led him to Jerusalem. He made him stand on the parapet of the temple, and he said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. It is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said in reply, It also says, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Now when the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from him for a time. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There is no doubt in Luke's Gospel who this Jesus of Nazareth is. From the very moment of his conception, the moment of the Annunciation, it is proclaimed that he is the Son of God. So this is not a temptation to determine whether he is or is not the Son of God. It is a temptation for him to determine what kind of Son of God he's going to be. In the first temptation, he's, tempta he's tempted to grasp 
after life on his own terms. He's hungry. Use your power. Make these stones into bread. Use your power to advance yourself. The second temptation, Jesus does not succumb to the lust for power or prestige. I'll give you all of this. All of this can be yours. All of this is mine and I can give it to any way I want. All of this can be yours. All you need to do is adore me, worship me. And the final temptation, in many ways the most insidious of them, that Jesus has not succumbed to is the The invitation to use God to advance his own plan, Jesus' own plan. He is tempted to manipulate and to tempt God, to cause God to do an act of of wonder in order to save him. You see, Jesus is being encouraged to become someone he is not. Jesus resists those temptations by affirming, really, through the scriptures, exactly who he is and who he shall be and who he has come to be by the power of the Spirit. You see, that temptation touches every single human being. It is a temptation to be other than who I am. Young people, as they grow up, are are filled with that temptation. They they want to be something. They want to be they want to be the hero that they admire. It's amazing how many boys have pictures of football players or baseball players or or basketball players and say, "That's the what I want to be. That's what I'm going to be. I'm going to work and I'm going to be just like that." I suppose it's natural. It's natural way as part of a child growing up. But you grow out of that. Or do we? See, there is the temptation to be whatever someone else wants me to be. The temptation to, to seek to, to please someone by acting and being in a way that that person desires me to be. Or there's the temptation to, to follow in the steps of a, of a hero and want to be just like that, that hero, that, that person who I place upon a pedestal. Thomas Merton suggests that we have two developmental options in life. We can become and be our true self, the person God created us to be, that's with all our strengths and also with all our weaknesses. Or we have the option to become a false self, a collection of all the expectations and roles a society assigns to us. The question of all questions, Merton says, that will be put by God to each one of us on Judgment Day is why did you not become your own true self? There's a wonderful television series called The The Big Bang Theory. And a spin-off of that television series is another one called Young Sheldon. And it's a description of Sheldon Cooper as a as a 10 or 11 year old youngster, a grade school youngster, a very talented youngster, a very bright young man. And his dream is to be an exceptionally good physicist. In fact, his dream is to be able to win a Nobel Prize. And so his hero is Einstein, and he wants to be Einstein. And so he studies up on Einstein. And one of the things he learns is that Einstein played the violin. So he begins to take violin lessons. And that really doesn't get him anywhere. He also learned, though, that Einstein was Jewish. So he thought, 
he would leave his Southern Baptist background and he'd become a Jew. That would put him more in line with being Einstein. So he calls up the local synagogue and he wants to ask, who do I have to talk to to become a Jew? And the receptionist says, well, you'll probably have to talk to the rabbi. And so the rabbi gets on the phone and Sheldon said, I, I want to convert, I want to become a Jew. And the rabbi says, why do you want to become a Jew? And Sheldon says, I want to be Einstein. And I know Einstein was a Jew. And the rabbi says, what does your mother say about that? And he said, well, I'm not sure. There, there was something about over my dead body, but I'm not sure what she said. Then the rabbi says to him, at the end of time, when you stand before God, God will not ask you why you did not become Einstein. But God might ask you, why did you not become Sheldon? Merton teaches, in finding God, we find our true selves. We return to the true order that God has willed for us. On the day of our baptism, we were called as sons and daughters of God. We are called as children of God. We are given a destiny. And the big question in our lives is, what kind of a son or daughter of God do I choose to be? So as we profess our faith, we profess using the baptismal creed. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, was raised to life on the third day, and is seated at the right hand of God? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body? and life everlasting. I do. We turn now to the Lord God and we make our prayer. For the church, that through fasting, prayer, almsgiving, and action, we may help to satisfy the physical and spiritual hunger of our neighbors around the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all government and political leaders, that they may work to end the violence in the Ukraine and that their decisions and actions lead to a future of peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from hunger or malnutrition, that they may know the grace of God through the efforts of those working for an equitable distribution of resources, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all of us, as we face temptations great and small, that we may turn to God for support and strength, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. That this Lenten season may be a fruitful one, a time of repentance and renewal for each of us individually and for the world at large, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions spoken and unspoken, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That the sick of our parish community, especially Bill Brengman, Marlene Brown, Bernie Klein, Ray Knotts, Greg Lothenbach, Anna Marie Mosing, Jeremiah Baker, 
and Marie Scanlon may be healed in body and spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That the dead, especially Daniel Kinzel and Gregory Moe, as they are gathered into paradise by Jesus, the lover of our souls, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Hail Mary, full, full of grace, the Lord, Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. acceptable to God the Almighty. Lord, is sacrifice with your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Lord, give us the right dispositions to make these offerings. For in this sacrifice, we celebrate the beginning of this sacred season. We pray this through Christ Jesus. He lives with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up, up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ Jesus our Lord. By abstaining 40 long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance, and by overturning the snares of the ancient serpent, he taught us to cast out the, level, the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Easter mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the angels and saints, we do proclaim your glory as we sing. God, you are the Holy One, you are the source of all that is holy. We humbly pray that you make our gifts holy. Send your Spirit upon them, and grant that by the power of your Spirit we may receive from this altar the body and blood of your Lord Jesus Christ. When he was betrayed and willingly entered into his passion, he took bread, 
He gave you thanks and praise. He blessed and he broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples and he said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body. It will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup and once more gave you thanks. He gave the cup to his disciples and he said, Take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the cup of my blood. The blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be poured out for you and for all that sin be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <clears throat> So we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection and we offer you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We thank you for counting us worthy to be in your presence and serve you. And we humbly pray that all who share the gift of his body and blood be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Gather her together in unity with Francis and with Bernard, our bishop, with the entire people your son has gained for you. Remember Roger Goldberg. It was first in baptism that he was drawn into the mystery of Christ. Bring him and bring all the departed to share in the fullness of life. And have mercy on us all. That with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles, with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages, May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Pray now as Jesus taught us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from all that is evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety. We wait in joyful hope for the coming of the Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. You may show to each other a sign of Christ's peace.
behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but, but only, only say, say the word, word and my soul shall be healed. You may be seated during communion time. For those wishing to receive communion, please fully extend your hand to receive the host. St. Matthew's is not distributing communion on the tongue at this time.
Let us pray together the prayer that is found on the back or in the front of the worship aid. Lord God, God our, our refuge in every danger, danger. We, we turn, turn to you in our, our distress. distress. Look, Look with, with compassion, compassion upon the afflicted. afflicted. Grant, Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give comfort to mourners. Grant healing to the sick. Give peace to the dying. Give strength to health care workers. And give us the courage to reach out to all in your love. Look with favor and protect each of us and our families. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Those who are going to bring communion to those unable to be here, please come forward. Our sisters and brothers await your visit and the grace of this sacrament. Take the body of Christ to them along with our prayer for them. Assure them that they are one with us in faith, hope, and love. Go in peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, now renewed with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened. Grant that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. Lord, may the bountiful blessing come down upon your people. We hope, even as we grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace now to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.